Wilmot Sadat Singh may not have been as good in basketball and football as Dave Bing and Donovan McNabb respectively would prove to be for the Orange. But then Bing was never told in the 1960s and McNabb was never told in the 1990s what Sadat Singh was told in the 1930s. That is, despite his obvious athletic skills, Sadat Singh couldn't play quarterback against the Maryland Terrapins and he couldn't play guard against the Navy midshipmen. This because he was an African American. This in a time when insane policies embraced by certain schools banned black players from participating in certain games. What made matters worse, of course, was that Syracuse University officials nodded and pulled Sidat Singh from their lineups rather than boycott the contests. But that's another story, a sad one. The happier story is what this young man, SU's first African-American star whose basketball jersey was retired by his alma mater in 2005, did when allowed to do it. In Sadat Singh's three campaigns on the Orange basketball team, he led it to a 42-13 and record and to wins over Georgetown, Michigan State, and Manhattan, the latter in the first game Syracuse would ever play in Madison Square Garden before signing on with the professional New York Rens. In his two years on the SU football team, he led it to a 10-5-1 record and to a mid-season number 10 national ranking in 1938 after tossing three fourth quarter touchdowns in a 1917 victory over Cornell, a performance that inspired Grantland Rice, the famous Grantland Rice, to compare the kid to Sid Luckman and Sammy Baugh. Beyond Syracuse, well, the fella who was not allowed to play certain games against certain schools postponed his plans to become a doctor and join the U.S. Army Air Corps, ultimately becoming a member of the famous Tuskegee Airmen. It was a patriotic decision that would cost Sadat Singh his life as he died on a training mission during World War II when his plane malfunctioned and crashed into Lake Huron. People wept when they heard the news, likely some folks at Maryland and Navy, much ashamed, hung their heads.